The Ford Motorite 400 in Limpopo early in September could get the sun set on a couple of championship challenges in the production vehicle category in this year's APSA Off-Road Championship. Three wins in a row, two of them with regular co-driver Ralph Pitchford, have seen Duncan Foss in the factory Nissan Navara take a healthy lead in the overall and super production class driver's championship. Pitchford, who missed the Toyota 1000 Desert Race, does not enjoy the same comfort zone in the co-driver standings, but all crews will be well aware that they have to drop one result at the end of the season. This puts pressure on teams and even Foss, who has a 100% finish record this season, will be aware of the need for reliability over the remaining three events. Some tight battles have developed throughout the classes, and for those crews with one or two non-finishes already on the scorecard, the pressure is even greater. Nissan Navara crews with reigning champions Hannes Krobler and Franzo Jordan picking up two wins have thus won all five events so far this season. With backup from African Heritage cross-country winners Ivar Tollefsen and Quinn Evans in a third factory Navara and Mark Corbett and Rudy Balzar in the Century Property Development Navara, the Nissan Challenge is a rather formidable one. Twice, however, Foss has been the recipient of some very good fortune with Castel Tiozo Hilux pair Mark Ronier and Chris Birkin crashing when within sight of victory. Such charity may not come their way again this season, or ever for that matter. Cronier and Birkin managed to crash only a K from the finish on the recent Amatole 500, but will have taken heart from the fact that they dominated for 499 kilometers. There is no doubt that both Cronier and Birkin and teammates Bevan Bertolt with Robin Houghton have the potential to end the current Nissan domination. The latter have had a dreadful season and their luck has also got to change at some stage. They do a good run and this event could be the turning point for them. Hichu and Yop de Brain in the Micron XL Toyota Hilux took a good third on the Amatoli 500, while the Chris Fisser Yapi Bardnos Dio in a third Castor Toyota Hilux have performed as consistently as ever since joining the SP Class Brigade. With a win long overdue, there will be plenty of confidence in the Toyota Cap. The Ford squad will also fancy their chances in a race they co-sponsor with Motorite. Former national champions Neil Woolridge and Kenny Schultheimer have loads of experience and a varied and technical route will be to their liking. Brandon Harkis in the second factory Ford Ranger has quickly settled down after the switch from special vehicles and he and John Moore have the potential to weld into a formidable combination. The experienced Manfred Schroeder and Ward Huxtable in the Barlow World Absolute Ford Ranger also have the potential to win races and could upstage the factory entries. The Ford Challenge is also bolstered by Kobus von Tonda and Rian Gropa in the Unifreight Ranger. Despite Nissan's winning streak, the SP class is now ultra-competitive and as Gronje and Birken have proved, a single mistake can be fatal. Expect a terrific scrap to emerge in Limpopo and don't be surprised to see a Toyota or a Ford in the winner's circle. The Class D battle could also be fascinating and is made more interesting by a tight championship issue. Harold and Tian Kun and their Land Rover still lead the driver-co-driver standings but are under intense pressure. Newcomers Dalmas' Ramon Besaidnot and Stefan Locke have suddenly emerged as championship challengers and will be full of confidence after a good African heritage cross-country Amatole 500 showing. Henry and Maurice Matten in their Obi Nissan hard body have won two races in a row to suddenly be only nine points adrift of the Kuns and their Obi boys use consistency as their major weapon. Also still very much in the championship picture are the likes of Yuri and Andre Duplessis in the BB Auto Nissan hard body and Arnold Duplessis with Johan Knox in a second BB Auto hard body. Kutsia Labaskachny and Johan Gerber in the Raisonics Nissan hard body also come into the equation and the scene is set for an interesting tussle with the Zermattens on a roll and looking menacing. 
some tight championship issues have emerged in Class E, and here, too, the pressure is mounting. Jack Beckham in the Ford Racing Ranger leads the Drivers' Championship by 10 points from Yanni Fissa in the Team Barber Spun Toyota Hilux, but he has a 100% record and still has to drop a score. Fissa's co-driver, Jorks Leroux, leads the co-driver's title chase by 10 points from Lechua Santoro, who sits alongside Peckham. Santoro missed out on points when he fell ill on the Amatole 500, and Peckham was forced to finish the race on his own. A crash saw George and Sharon Barkaisen's Roacon Toyota Hilux also miss out on points, and they too dropped down the pecking order. Suspension problems also sidelined Brian Martin and Oki Furi in the Castel Toyota Hilux, and like the Barkaisen's, they will need to bounce back. Mark and Stuart Moffat in the Bosel Toyota, Yaku Swanepoel in Graham Bishop's IDM Cement Toyota Hilux, and Fabio Tafani with Nav Alan Deerling in the Club Refrigeration Toyota Hilux add weight to the Toyota Challenge. Joining Ford in tackling the Toyota hordes at Thomas Rundle with Brian Roberts in their Barden Tire Services Nissan Hardbody have shown encouraging form of late. The battle up front in the SP class is going to be a feature of the Ford Motorite 400, and if they manage a sixth win on the trot, Nissan will have done it the hard way. Talking Nissan, one of their stalwarts is Francois Jordan, national champion and co-driver for the exacting Hannes Schrobler. We asked him how it all started. In all probability, when I was two years old and my dad uh, used to take me along to Roy Esketh, and uh, Jim Redman's bike ran over my foot. And uh, I think that's where it all started. After that, uh, my dad was a great rally enthusiast and racing follower. And uh, we spent nights in the plantations looking at Hetema and the works in those days. And I think it just started all there. And what about the first success? When, where and how? Yeah, you know, I like to tell people uh, my very first rally I did in Swaziland in 1978. It was the peak rally and uh, I won this trophy and that's where it all started. I think uh, my first trophy was just about as important as the, as the very important one later on when I, in 2004, when I um, did the Dakar with Janil and this is, and we came seventh. So uh, these two trophies I think are equally important to me. <laughs> and which disciplines of the sport really grabbed the man and why? The forms of motorsport that I started in was rallying. I, uh, I started off driving, driving a car. I think everybody wants to be a driver. I started off driving a car and uh, then uh, I had a very bad road accident. I broke my arm and I was out of it for a couple of years. And uh, then I came back and I lost my sponsors, of course, and I nearly lost my wife because of all the money we, had, we took on the bonds to rally. And then I really decided I want to drive fast and I started navigating. <laughs> Uh, I started navigating and I was fortunate enough to navigate to get a drive with Rulof Fekin in 1989 uh, in the Toyota Works team. And there the ball started rolling. After that I, I spent some wonderful years with Rulof. Uh, we drove the 16-valve Toyotas in those days, which was a fantastic rally car. And uh, after that uh, I uh, rallied with uh, my good friend Leon Boerta. If you can remember the red Pizza Hut Golf. We had some wonderful accidents as well. Leon taught me to be brave. And uh, that was really a highlight in my life. It's a good friend of mine. We had wonderful times. I've never raced on the track. I would have loved to race on the track. And I really never drove motorbikes fast uh, on the track or anywhere else. So in 2000, Enzo King came to me and he asked me if I would like to navigate on the off-road uh, uh, series. He got a drive in the Mitsubishi. And then the off-road series started again. And uh, after that year, I said, thank you, I've got my T-shirt. This is a bit rough for me. And uh, then the call from Lynn Hall at Nissan came, and he asked if I would like to go with Janil in the T-truck. And uh, I said, well, I'm a bit far, and uh, I've got the T-shirt, but I would like to drive in the truck. And they're still battling to get me out of it. It's seven years since with Nissan at the moment, and uh, I really enjoy that. So the three disciplines I've been involved in, uh, it was the, 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 the rally, navigating, the driving, and now sitting in the, in the hot seat in the Nissan. And what does it take to navigate well? And also, what does it take from your steering man to listen properly? You can navigate as, as well as, and as fast and as good as you want to. If you were the driver that can't listen properly, adapt properly, and, and drive the car properly, uh, you can't win. Um, I, there's no difference between top drivers. Uh, Janil 
When I started out with him, I was not used to getting instructions from a driver, from a navigator. I mean, he, uh, he was used on a racing car, and it, it took some, some adaption on both of our sides. So I, I wasn't used to a guy that, that didn't listen, and he wasn't used to a guy that did, that, that gave him instructions. Um, so we went on a total rally, which was a pace night event, and after that, it, it really became a wonderful time with Janil. We, we adapted well to each other. Hannes is an old fox. You don't have to tell Hannes anything. If you should say to him, T-junction left, he doesn't, he doesn't even worry what the T-junction is. He knows exactly what it is. I mean, Hannes has been in the sport for 30 years, and he had numerous navigators. So it's a real pleasure going with Hannes as well. But driving, there's no difference between top drivers. They're all very good, and it's a pleasure to be with them. Nissan have been dominant for a lot of seasons now and are on a winning streak and are right now on a winning note. What makes them so good? It's a wonderful team to be in. Um, Glenn has got such a wonderful way of building cars and building teams that I'm sure anybody envies me that's, that's not in that team. Uh, we've also got a very good relationship in the team. Uh, the guys that prepare our cars, they will work out their hearts out for us. Uh, of course, it's very sad about Heine that passed away the other day. He was a good friend of us and uh, we all miss him. But there's other guys that stepped into his shoes and it's really a good support team. Uh, uh, they, uh, what, what more can I say that you're in the best car and the best team? It's a wonderful position. I mean, I'm a very lucky guy. Does a navigator get to choose who he wants to ride with? Well, you know, a navigator is always in the position that he cannot dictate. He gets uh, fortunate enough to be asked by a good driver to, to join him. And uh, hopefully Hannes uh, makes up his mind to take me again with him next year. I'm sure Hannes won't retire for the next couple of years. Um, and then uh, Mark Corbett has asked me to go on Dakar with him this coming year uh, in 2008. It's also a wonderful opportunity and I'm very fortunate that, I'm, uh, that I can, uh, can step, in, step in there. Uh, Glenn and his team is going to do the backup, so all the friends will be together in the desert. Francois Jordan is certainly one of a kind. Vehicle.